Oh my gosh, this is disgusting. Do you ever wonder how those neural guys make that gritty noise bass? Or how do you make that jump up Bristol bass that has been championed by producers such as Shy FX and Break? Well, if you've seen my bubbly bass tutorial last year, then you'll know that it's all about adding a noise layer over sub bass and then distorting the entire signal. This classic technique of drum and bass becomes super fun when you have tools such as Cable Guy's Noise Shaper, which allows you to create some interesting noise articulations with their vast array of noise profiles and not to mention their very powerful wave editing tool. Combine this with some other effects in Shaper Box 2 and you're on your way to creating some pretty gritty bass sounds. By the way, my name is Stranger, and if you want to improve your music production and sound design, especially with drum and bass and dance music, then this channel is for you. And if you're interested in grabbing Noise Shaper, make sure you check it out in the link below. So today I'm going to show you how I would use Noise Shaper in a drum and bass context, and you'll see how you can unlock the power of this tool. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's first talk about how we can use Noise Shaper to improve your percussion. So I have a simple two-step break here. And let's solo the kick channel. So I added Shaper Box to the kick channel. And if you have the bundle, then you have access to all these other effects. I'm just going to add Noise to the first slot here. So currently we're on the envelope mode, which is enabled on the far right here. So it follows the amplitude envelope of the kick. So this is useful for adding a little bit of high frequency on top of your kick. Well, I actually like to use this over a snare. It kind of helps the snare snap when you have that extra layer of high frequency over it. And you can uh, filter the noise with this high pass filter here. Notice that you also have access to a bunch of different noise uh, samples here. And there's some really great sounds which you can use here. The flangy ones are cool. I like the analog one. There's some vinyl and dub plate recordings, which is pretty cool. So get that crackly, nasty dub plate sound. The cassette tapes are nice too, some warmer sounding noise. Tape vintage is very nice. The console noise is also really good. So some great selections of noise sounds that you can apply to your sound. The trick I really want to show you here is adding a bit of a reverse pre-transient to the kick. So this is a technique that's used a lot in tech house and trance where you have a bit of a reverse noise swooping into the kick and it gives the illusion that the kick smacks harder because you have this little pre-transient right before that kick hits. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do this with Noise Shaper. So our kick lands on the first beat and in between the third and fourth beat over here. So we want a reverse around this area and at the end, so it swoops into the first kick. So let's begin by adding a point here and a point here. We're going to bring this point down here. So this swoops into the first kick. And then we're going to have another one in this area, swooping into that second kick. You can turn on this a magnet to snap onto the grid. That helps. So now we have this. Let's filter it. Let's go back to the console noise. We can increase the trim to bring up the gain a little bit on the noise. Let's adjust the shape. We can adjust the slope. It's so like that. I actually like to make this one a bit longer. It's, not, it's nice to add some variation. So we can bring this one perhaps up to here and then increase the slope. All right. That's what I want. You get that thump now because you have that little swoop in. That swoop. 
This trick is used a lot in neural drum and bass as well, and it's a nice way to add a little extra detail to your drums. All right, let's work on the snare a little bit. Once again, I've added Noise Shaper to the snare. Let's turn it on. And I want Envelope on this time to follow the uh, envelope or amplitude of the uh, snare. We'll just bring the trim down. I can use the threshold here to catch just the initial tip or transient of the snare. And then you can play with the release. Let's filter it. I actually like playing some with some of the organic sounds over the snare. For example, blowing bubbles. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Kind of adds a snappiness, some random detail to the snare, which is interesting. This kind of thing I hear done a lot in the, that halftime neuro style that I've been hearing a lot a couple years ago. Let's try the key rattle would be a good one for that. It just adds a bit of extra detail, right? Let's mute it. Right, just a subtle detail. Makes the music a little more interesting when you have something a little random like that. All right, let's hear it with a kick. This was before. Makes the drums a little more interesting. Now, if you have a break beat, you can do some cool stuff with Noise Shaper as well. So we can add some high frequencies on top of the break and have it follow the amplitude of the break beat. Now you can solo the noise to hear what's happening on its own. Let's filter it. Now what's super fun is that when you enable the multiband mode on the top left corner, so you can split the incoming signal between a low, mid, and high band, and then you can have each band trigger a different noise sample. So for the highs, we can trigger maybe some crispy crackles. And then on the low band, which the kick takes up predominantly, we can have a completely different sound. before so this adds another layer of fun to your sound design so things start to get really fun when you start adding noise shaper to some bass so here's a simple sine wave that i'm playing through vital and it's just playing one simple note so now let's add some noise to it so I'm going to use one of these shapes on the bottom, so it's a sine wave. We can change the speed here to 1 8 We're going to add some drive on top. So if you have Shaper Box 2, then you'll have additional effects that you can add, and there's a number of them. The drive shaper is really good. Uh, there's some really great distortion shapes here. Not to mention you can add a completely different LFO shape to the distortion, which will result in some really interesting noise articulations. We're just going to keep it straight here. Let's increase the drive. Now make sure to try the different distortion algorithms here. And use it to taste. I like soft clip. It has that nice round analog sound. Okay, so it's following this LFO shape. So you're getting that kind of bubbly Bristol bass sound from this wobble. Simply by modulating the volume of that noise, you get that wobble. Now, things can sound a little bit better if you have volume shaper. So you can add this in and move this right before the noise. And we're going to add a sine wave once again. So this will add an LFO to that bass right before we add the noise. Make sure it's the right time. And let's filter the noise using the high pass filter here. And you can increase the gain of the noise using this trim button. Let's hear it over the beat. Oh. 
Awesome. Now, just one thing with Shaper Box, just make sure your MIDI trigger is on. That way, when the note hits, it's going to trigger the LFO at the beginning. Now, another thing you need to do is you need an empty MIDI track here, which sends MIDI information to the Shaper Box. So I have this yellow track here. It doesn't play any sound. It simply triggers this note. And then I'm sending this to the wobble track. And then in the second drop down, I'm telling it to send that MIDI to Shaper box too. This just ensures that everything activates on time. This type of bass line sounds especially fun when you play some melody. So here's a different sequence. Now you can further finesse this wobble if you go into the drive and also add an LFO shape to it. That way the distortion follows the shape of the rest of the bass sound. You may want to decrease the drive amount. That's sounding extra bubbly. So that's how you do that jump up wobbly Bristol bass sound champion by people such as Shy Effects and Break. Now going back into Vita, watch what happens when we add an additional oscillator. It's playing seven semitones up, so that perfect fifth, and it's playing, I believe, uh, seven octaves higher as well. Watch this. You can change the uh, sync amount, so this would be even higher. Instant jump up basses. Play this with a little bit of a pitch bend and you'll get this. Simply by adding an additional oscillator to your sound design. Oodles of fun. All right, the next one we're gonna do is the neuro style noise bass. A lot of people have asked me how I made the bass sound in my track test tube. So I'm gonna show you how using Shaper Box. So again, I have a basic sine wave. This time I have a bit of an amplitude decay, so it fades out kind of like an 808. And then I'm using LFO 1 as an envelope to modulate the pitch of the oscillator by 36 semitones. So what you want is a quick attack so you get a kick to it. The important thing here is the pattern. So notice this pattern, it's used a lot. It just mirrors the bounce style kick pattern of drum and bass. So you got that boom, 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 boom. Then hear that with the beat. Notice you got that nice bounce with that additional bass in the middle. All right, let's add a shaper box on top. Okay, this time we're gonna use a sawtooth like this. So depending on how grimy you want to space the sound, set the drive amount as well as the noise volume accordingly. We can also modulate the drive for a little more finesse to that sound. So we can add a point here, bring it down, curve it. And then we can make the decay of this uh, noise a bit faster. So instead of one bar, we can make it a half. And of course you can adjust the filter to taste. Remember to experiment with the different noise samples. The analog noise samples sound great, especially cassette A, I like. Awesome results. So that's the noise base. Now we can do a little more with some more complicated articulations. So let's try that. So now we're gonna create some more interesting noise articulations by drawing custom LFOs. Now this time I'm using a more basic bass pattern. It's just two notes, and this pattern is actually the pattern I use in test tube.
It's awesome how funky you can make things just by two notes. Now going back into noise shaper, let's use the pen tool to create a custom shape. I like this curve tool. You can make, create some interesting articulations. And then you can use the arrow button to fine tune the shape, something like that. So that sounds pretty funky with some cool custom shapes. You can create some really cool stuff. So once you're happy with that shape, you can save it on the bottom here using this down arrow button. Funky stuff. All right, let's create some more shapes. This time I'm gonna use a sine wave. And then we can use this two times button to multiply the waveform. And if you hold down shift, you can make triplets. So let's create three. And that sounds pretty funky. Let's do it one more time. That's sounding sick. Let's try it one more time. So with faster rhythms, you get that rattly sound, which is cool. Let's go back to this one. So some really cool sounds you can make with the different noise shapes here. Let's go back to this one. And if you hold down shift and click this button, it highlights all the points. And then you can skew the shape by holding control, click and drag. Now you can make it fade in like this. That's a pretty sick articulation. So again, let's save the shape down here. I'm going to bring back that fast one just so we can save it and save it down here. So now we have three shapes. Now let's turn on this MIDI switch button. So what this does is this allows us to trigger the different shapes with a MIDI note. So we can create kind of a call and response between the different shapes. So notice that each shape is labeled by a note. So this shape is C sharp, this one is D, and this one is D sharp. So going back into that yellow track where it's sending MIDI information to shaper box, so what I have here is the C sharp will trigger that first shape. And then this D here will trigger that second shape. And this C zero just makes sure that the LFO triggers when the note starts. So this, these two notes mirrors the notes I have here, except uh, it's on C instead of F. So let's listen to what we have here. Notice the shape changing. Let's go back here. Let's duplicate this, and now we're going to move this node up here so it changes to a completely different shape at the end. Let's go back to Shaper Box. So now watch what happens. Ooh, that's getting grimy. Now going back into the Drive Shaper, let's fix the shape here. So increase that distortion accordingly. If you want more grimy, add more distortion. And again, try the different noise samples. This valve one sounds pretty sick. Mm, now we're getting some grimy neural bass sounds. Amazing possibilities and super fun when you do it with Noise Shaper. So with an array of different tools and noise shaper, as well as if you have shaper box two with the additional effects such as drive and volume shaper, you can unlock some amazing possibilities with this tool. Super fun and endless hours of creation. So as you can see, Noise Shaper has a ton of cool sound design features to really make use of their noise profiles. From the assortment of different noise samples to being able to use it in multiband, not to mention the sheer amount of possibilities available with their wave editor, this tool will become handy for many tunes to come. The key to this tool is to experiment with their many different noise sounds, as well as creating different shapes and profiles, and combine that with some awesome distortion, and you're on your way to creating some grimy bass. And if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Anyways, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. 
keep practicing. I'll see you at the next video.